Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Sangha Center here in Lowell, Massachusetts, with the longtime home of the Lowell Lock Monsters in the American Hockey League. A few years back now, they show my age, and now it's, of course, the home uh, for the Riverhawks of UMass Lowell, and they certainly have a great hockey program, and the students get to use this facility out at UMass Lowell, so great place to matriculate, perhaps, is UMass Lowell is big-time sports and a beautiful place here. Looking forward to it. Matt Noonan alongside for the call of this one as uh, the Andover Golden Warriors, a number five seed, taking on the Hingham Harbourman. And Matthew, welcome aboard. <laughs> Don, it's a pleasure to be here. And this is this is the creme de la creme hockey. I mean, this is the time right now where, as we both know, this is tournament time, and we're going to see some really good hockey tonight here right in Lowell. Yeah, you know, you talk about teams uh, being uh, at the top of their game. Hingham has been to these type of events in the past, and they've been very successful. For Andover, a bit of an unknown, as they have never played in a Division 1A hockey tournament, yet alone win a state championship, and Hingham has done it at the Division 1 and the D1A level. Right, and, you know, Hingham is for an independent school. It's just, you know, they play a really tough schedule. They play against, uh, obviously, a lot of really good teams and you know tonight let's start off with obviously one of the biggest keys for Hingham here as we're panning over to the left as you can say hey it's going to start obviously with their goaltender and that's Robbie Kornack now he's a senior and really the coach right now is saying that hey you know Tony Messina was talking about to the Hingham newspaper hey guess what he used to get razzled back in the day but he's someone that obviously is composed and we'll see that tonight obviously with a 1.29 goal against average on the other side for Andover well let's start obviously as we just alluded to first super eight appearance past three years they have been snubbed that's what some people would say here don and obviously it's going to start obviously with you know frankie higgins 19 goals 18 assists team lead for the assists if they're going to get goals tonight it's going to definitely go through this young man well, both teams will have their starting lineups introduced in just a moment here you know you talk about cornack a guy with eight shoutouts on the season Chingris, the starting goaltender uh, for Andover, also with eight shoutouts. He's had a couple of shoutouts over the last few games against top 15 teams. So right. it's going to be a goaltender's matchup tonight. A delight for those defensive hockey fans out there, I get a feeling. Right, and I think if you're if you're a defensive guy or you're someone that enjoys watching goaltending, you're going to see some really good goaltending tonight here too. I mean, it's it, that's really what it's going to come down to. And the question is, which is the first team, that defensive unit, that's going to surrender that goal? And then the question after that, Don, is, when you surrender it, how do you recover from it? So that the starting lineups introduced Andover in their sharp looking dark blue uniforms with the maize numerals and a little bit of white trim. Hingham in their white uniform tops with Harbinman written across the front there with that Hingham. That's Hingham as my eyes get old. And that's in red. <laughs> and they got the red shoulder sharp looking uniforms on both these teams. So right now the uh, Public address announcer down below is uh, going through the routine of talking about rules and regulations and how to act here at the Sangha Serena. Also making a couple of announcements down there. So here's your starting lineup for Andover. Looks like they're going to uh, all stay back along the goal line together. And uh, team unity, I like that. Feeney gets a start. One of the sophomore forwards for this team. Jake Lachance. You talk about Lachance. 11 assists. He's a guy leading the team in that category. Yeah, he's definitely going to be one of the players to certainly watch here. I mean, he's a senior defenseman. Again, five goals, 11 assists. And that's the thing, too. Like, you know, coming into today's contest here, John, we're looking at the numbers, and you say, okay, this team can definitely get some assists. And that's, again, someone that, as we were going to have to certainly see, Feeney's going to be another one here, too. Caden uh, Dillman is another one as well. So if you look up and down the roster, the Sandover squad, they can certainly find ways to locate goal scorers pretty quickly. This being an early start time, 5.30 in the late afternoon with sunlight still on the outside and right. unseasonably warm temperatures at about 62 as I get my fantasy as a weather forecaster <laughs> out of the way there. You know, Hingham has brought a pretty good crowd. That's not an easy ride here. And likewise, Andover, it's a lot easier to get here uh, to the Sondas when they have some folks filling in the stands on the far side. Right. That's, you know, driving up here, you're thinking about that too. You think, hey, Hingham's got the longest ride. St. John's Prep at Danvers, not too far away from Lowell. 
Then you got Andover, also not too far away from Lowell. And then you got Burlington, which is if you want to take Route 3 up here, not too far. So a long ride, but I'm sure as the game progresses, we're going to see more fans from Hingham showing up right now, seeing a lot of blue and gold here, especially in front of us. All right, we're going to have a uh, live rendition of the National Anthem. That will take place down to our right, and we'll stay here for that. Rendition of the National Anthem. I love it. The MIAA does a great job seeking outstanding anthem singers from the different schools represented throughout the tournament, whether it's hockey, basketball, wrestling, you name it. They find some talented young folk out there, and that's uh, great to see. It's more than just the student athlete involved with high school athletics, and that's the thing I like about it uh, so much. There's so many folks come together, band members at football games. Yeah, very true, very true. <laughs> all that good stuff. And, you know, one other thing, too, before face-off here, John, let's just also throw this out here. I mean, you know, these two teams met really about 13 days ago with Hingham winning 4 to nothing. You have to think for Andover's sake, obviously able to rebound since then. Obviously, Hingham continued to surge the rest of the way, too. But you have to wonder how much of that game film they watched leading up to this game. And, again, it'll be interesting tonight to see how Andover's pregame jitters Bigger, bigger stage for them to play on here, and obviously a great setup here in Bowl. They play out of the Duke County League in the course of the Merrimack Valley in the Tier 1. They certainly had a great season. As I will turn down our gain on our crowd microphone a little bit as the fans uh, get excited at the drop of the puck. Here. So we're underway. Andover defending down to our right, and Hingham to our left-hand side. Last time I watched Hingham play, they were winning a state championship a couple years back at the Boston Garden, as I fondly call it, and I <laughs> will never change the name of what it used to be. Of course, the championship games will take place. There's a high stick by Higgins on the hockey puck. Some might say, no way. Didn't look like it was above his shoulder, but the officials blow the whistle, and the faceoff coming back on the Harbinman end. So just underway, scoreless on the first. 15-minute periods in high school hockey here in the grand state of Massachusetts. Drop the puck quickly. First of two today, St. John's Prep in Burlington will battle in the nightcap horse, and we're back here again tomorrow at the Sangas. Good pass ahead. This is Kenny trying to weave his way into the corner. Got tied up quickly along the wall. Gets bumped there by Bellucci. Uh, the puck squirts free to Higgins. Higgins wins a C on the jersey. Got it to the blue line. Long shot. Slapped off to the corner. Far side. Taken there by Bellucci. Good outlet pass comes near side to Arpin, and Arpin finds his teammate, and it's rambled ahead, and Sent down ice by Archambault. Taken over by the Harbiman. Both teams coming out, not showing any fear. Going right at each other as the Harbiman will make their first line change of the contest here early in the first period. Long stretch pass out to center right. 
Sweeping down the right wing side, looks like Michael Riley. Riley got cut off at the pass in the corner there. Puck will slide around near side. Lachance will keep it in. You got to watch him. He's got 11 assists in the season, so he's a good one there, Matthew. Oh, no, he is. He certainly is, and that's going to be one of, again, another player to watch here, especially with attacking. But, again, it's going to be goaltending, obviously, is going to be the two, really what I'm looking for right out here in the next couple of the first few minutes. Keeler scored the puck to center. Leone across the line, onside, tried to get off a wrister, and that was poked away by Joe Jacobs. Good defensive effort. Long pass goes around the wall to the far left wing side and bumped down hard was Jacob Clark. Clark, a junior, with 14 points, has shown some uh, productivity. Uh, the Golden Warriors will flip it through center ice. Gets knocked down. Puck still between the blue lines. Let's see how deep both these teams go with their lines. Can they go three deep? You know, when you go up against St. John's and Central Catholic and other teams who are part of this Division 1A tournament, you got to go deep on the bench or they may weigh you down. No, absolutely. And I think that's what we're going to definitely see as this game continues to progress here. I mean, both these squads, obviously, deep benches and a lot of lines, but that's really what they're going to need is they're going to need, obviously, all their lines stepping up tonight. Faceoff controlled by Andover to the far side, logging a lot of ice time is uh, Bellucci, the defenseman on the far side, picked four to the way and sends it up ahead. Good pass. And uh, on the ramble down the left wing side, trying to send it on is Ingram to the back wall. Players collide there. Far side taken by Carroll. Carroll, the faceoff man. He's a center iceman for the Harbinman, deep in his own zone, playing some defense. Puck kept in along the boards by Steve Ingram. Ingram played it to the corner. He's going to be taken away by Carroll. Bumped it around to the far side. On the forward check, Lachance. That is Shane Lachance. And imagine the brother of uh, Jake Lachance, the defenseman. Harbin won a line change, so they send it on down. Andover's going to work it swiftly. Long pass ahead by Tavener, and it's going to be taken away. Backpedaling is Wooden. Wooden retreats to his own corner. He got at the blue line, kept in by the poke of Dillman, and it's back down below that goal line extended. Taken again there by Caleb Wooden. Played far side. Puck chopped to center. It's rolling at the red line at center. Scooting on it is Feeney. Feeney will backhand it safely out to center right. Andover and Hingham. First period, scoreless. Smooth hockey thus far here in the Division 1A tournament. All yeah. kinds of hockey taking place all around the state at many arena. Oh, yeah, no, it's a bit busy time, as we both know, not just here in Massachusetts, obviously also all across the region, especially here in the New Northeast with a lot of high school tournaments. Riley centering pass in front, and it's swept away by Jake Lachance, who held his ground on the doorstep. Yeah, early chance right there, opportunity for Hingham to get on the board, and as Coach Messina was saying, you know, uh, a couple of weeks ago, not too long ago, hey, look, they're they're physical, they're young, and they're fast. Dillman worked it to the high slot, comes back to the blue line. Puck play to the corner, nice play by Bellucci. As there was guys in that shooting lane, couldn't get it towards goal. So both teams trying to come up with chances here. Harbinman had struggled to get it out of the zone. They finally do. Up ahead to Higgins, but the pass was behind him. And here comes Andover again, scooting off the right wing. Shane Lachance, he'll play it to the back wall. Chased down by Arpin. Arpin couldn't get to it. And back come the Harbinman up ahead. Sent along by Carroll to the far left wing side. Carried in by Quilty. Quilty will play it to the corner. Comes free. And Harbin with a chance to play it back to the blue line. Long shot on by Higgins. And that's sticked away by Shingris. The first time he's had a chance to play the puck. So Hingham with their first shot on goal. Now slowing it down is Kenny. And he played it off into the corner to Higgins. Higgins skates far side, back to the blue line. Quick wrister is going to be blocked out to center ice. They tried to force it through the Packard. And that was a nice block by Michael Riley, the senior forward. It looks like they are the Harbinman offside. You know, I was, uh, reading an article in Brad Park, who was a Hall of Fame defenseman for the Bruins and the Rangers, as right. you probably know and everybody else knows. But, yeah, it was fascinating. He said, you know, I never tried to shoot the puck on goal. I always shot the puck to beat the guy coming out to defend me, which I thought was just a keen insight on uh, what a guy should do from the blue line. Oh, it's that, interesting, too, especially you, you being a hockey guy yourself, playing locally and even playing in uh, the New England area for college, too. I, was that something you ever you were doing? Higgins with a shot up. Of course, I was just like Brad Park. <laughs> <laughs> I had a chance to play against Park in a uh, pickup league at the old Saugus Arena. Oh, boy. And I'll tell you what, playing against him uh, was a hockey lesson. He knew where you were going before you did. It's just his anticipation skills, unbelievable. And well, that's something we'll definitely see here, too. And 
uh, between you're just again these are some really talented uh, teams both you're seeing today and in our next game obviously then tomorrow too we're gonna definitely see some of that puck bouncing around at the andover line gonna be taken by jake lachance here to the near side good pass up into the middle of ingram ingram cuts across nearly had a three on two ingram shot knocked away centering pass in front that got sticked away too cornack might have got a piece of it andover has not had a good shot on goal as yet and now they play it off to the far side right. Taken in by Shane Lachance. Rolled around to the near side. Trying to chase it down is Joe Sullivan. And Sullivan got it out to center ice. Tried to poke it on. Now gives a chase down into the corner. Sullivan centering pass in front to the goal. Both that's on the doorstep. And it's going to be tied up by Shingris. Oh, boy, I tell you, they had a couple of bodies in front, including Timmy Carroll. That was a nice rush by Sullivan down the right wing. I thought for a second there, I thought it was going to kind of glide past Chingris' uh, glove. He's lucky he, gl- he was able to glove that. But you're right. I mean, right now, I mean, hang on, four shots on net compared to just none for goal, uh, for Andover. And it certainly does seem that, you know, right now, the Hingham's obviously got a little bit of momentum here, too, and they're – uh, certainly going to need to see Andover start picking that up here because otherwise this could be a long uh, next couple of uh, eight minutes and 55 seconds. Off the faceoff, controlled by the Harbinman shot from the blue line, arrested wide by Caleb Wooden. Well, the Warriors content to flick it out to center ice. Feeney digging after it, looking for some support from Dillman. He's turned back, now rushing ahead is Higgins. He got spilled, no penalty call. Some folks wanted a call there, they're not going to get it. Puck to the far side, Michael Finney, or Feeney rather, plays it out ahead to the checkered line at center. Can be taken right back by Higgins. Higgins knocked at the center right, intercepted there, and Feeney will send it right back into the Harbinman zone, but only got it halfway there. Hingham wants a line change, so they're content just to dump it deep off the stick of Quilty. Dancing out to the near left side is Lachance between the rings, plays it off. Good pass up ahead. It comes to Dillman now. Dillman trying to maneuver through. Oh, he had the head down, and uh, he got nailed by Terrace. Yeah, that's a, that's a that's a hit for sure. And that you know the, the one thing though here so far, Don, Andover just can't find an answer right now with this with this defense. The defense is generating opportunities for the offense. Higgins with a shot on midpoint, deflected just wide a goal. Andover trying to get something going. This is King down the left wing side again. He's beaten to that loose puck and turned away by Terrace who threw that big body check the biggest of the game thus far Wakeham will send it in on goal that is a shot on goal Cornett had to make a stop that'll be the first shot by Andover here in the period 725 remaining in the first so we're midway through still scoreless and an icing call against the Golden Warriors number five seed in this division 1a tournament Hingham coming in as the fourth seed Interesting, Higgum plays as an independent, so they kind of make up their schedule as they go, which is interesting. Right, and but you know, that, but that's not, I mean, look, you know, it's it's interesting because I think we're going to... score! Well, that one found its way through, and Higgum with a one nothing lead. Tommy Kornack let it go, his second of the year. Well, they won the faceoff. And a shot on goal, and Higgum has a one nothing lead. Well, we talked about being aggressive, and that's what they did right away. They were able just to get out quickly and flung that on net really quickly. 7.34 time of the goal, even strength tally. Hingham has a 1-0 lead over Andover. Double elimination tournament. So if you lose today, it's not woe is me. You just got to uh, bite the bullet and battle on back. Here comes the announcement on the goal. Yeah, Kornak the tally. I believe Higgins and Carroll picking up the helpers on the goal. Carroll will take yet another faceoff. He wins it on. Higgins this time will play it up the boards on behind the net. Chasing it down is Bellucci. Bellucci had to take it off his stick. It's sent in front and knocked away. Good forecheck there by Minkin to the far side. Carroll hacking at it. Golden Warriors in their own end now. Look like they've uh, become a little flat-footed, and that puck stolen. Worked down low by Kornak and got it in on goal. So Kornak anticipating. Yeah, Andover stopped skating there during that entire shift and had a lot of difficulty getting it out of the zone. Yeah, that's that, they're going to need their defense really to start getting something started here for this offense, and that's what we saw pretty quickly here, Don, was just the fact that, hey, Hingham was able to get that defense 
generating it. And as we both know, when your defense can generate offensive opportunities and transitions, it's going to help your offense out a lot more. That's going to be a spark for them. And Andover's got to start doing something here. Feeney comes down the left wing. little toe drag. Carries to the corner and got locked up by Wooden. Wooden ties him along the boards. But finally sent out towards the blue line. Trying to wrist one towards net. It was Dillman, but it was deflected. And they're going to claim not kept in at the blue line on the far side by Jack Murray. Harbiman trying to get it out. And a little tardy doing so. It's going to be taken away by Dillman. Played all the way around to the far side. Shot blocked. Reaching after it, trying to keep it in the zone was Murray. No avail there, and it's sent on down as Harbinman will look for another line change. They've been changing the lines quite frequently, short shifting. It has paid off. They've had the energy here in the first, and they have the one nothing lead. Puck to the far side, Quilty in. He'll send it deep. Took a funny bounce off that corner board over there on the far side. Now Higgins played it back to the line. Comes back through Kenny. And collected to the near side right by Quilty. Quilty plays it back to the blue line. The Packard long shot high up off the glass. Puck side of the net. Scooped up by Archambault. Archambault will play it to the near wall left to Dillman. Dillman poked at it. Got it to the blue line and that is all. Dillman trying to get it out again. Needs a little help from Lachance. Lachance uses his partner and finally thrown out the center ice. And it comes cross ice. And over in the midst of a line chain. So it's just taken away by Carroll. Carroll into the circle. Slows it down. Bumps it on behind the net. Chased down by Tavener. Tavener, real small guy out there along that blue line. But Andover, not the biggest at all. But no, not at all. Yeah, throws the weight around, though, doesn't he? <laughs> that, that he does. That he does. He's got to use his size and his speed. And they got their physical players, uh, according to Messina. Played ahead to Arpin. Arpin just poked at it, and it's turned back by Hingham, the center. Puck on behind. Cornack gets a touch on it. Free to the far wall now. Taken there by Riley. Riley wears an A on the jersey as an assistant captain for this Andover team. Andover team had to keep things together early in the year. There was some controversy, and uh, things cleared up, and that's all I'm really going to say about it. And these uh, young men deserve some credit, uh, especially the captains and the assistant captains. Oh, there's a shot from the blue line by Lachance, a wicked wrister, and that was deflected up off the glass. But these guys have uh, stayed together, and oh, you really have. got to compliment them for that. Now they here's have. a break through the middle, trying to break on in is Clark, and he got turned off the puck. Jingers had it tied up in his skates. A goaltender out there public skating. A little dangerous play right there. Hang him if they had just were in the right, a little different positioning. That could have been an easy goal. This is King. Shot on. Save made by Kornak. Shots on goal. 7-2 in favor of Hingham. Important is the score, however. 1-0. Hingham. Right. And Terrace uh, adding to his goal score now. Obviously up to 18 points. 13 goals on the season. 5 assists. You know, we, I know we harped on, obviously, Kornak, again, a really just impressive player who starts from the back end for the for the Harbor men and works all the way up. And he's been tested a little bit tonight, but not that much. And we'll see as the game progresses. Obviously, as the time goes on, does he wear down a little bit? But from reading about him and watching him already here, Don, I don't, I don't know if he was going to wear down. These guys are young. They'll never wear down. No, they don't. They, don't, they won't. He's a senior, too, and... King and Carroll on the faceoff. Carroll for the team in the white jersey tops with the red trim on the shoulders there. That's Hingham. And, of course, Andover in the dark blue with the gold numerals. I guess it's Mays, right? Now it's played down inside the Golden Warriors end. Could call it gold, I guess, the Golden Warriors. I guess that's the easiest color to call it. On the far side. So there's a lot of interesting names for uh, for different colors, especially whether it's high school or college athletics, as we both know. Yes, absolutely. Puck sent back down ice and should go long enough. Indeed, it will for an icing call. And a faceoff coming back inside the Andover zone. 319 remaining in the first. Hingham scoring. It was a, a goal by defenseman Tommy Kornack. The senior is second of the season with the assist going to Jake Higgins and center iceman Timmy Carroll. Quick whistle at the drop of the puck. They're going to do that again. Crowd filling in nicely on the far side. And all the concession stands are open. You really get that college feel here inside the Songus, don't you? No, you do. We were here, obviously, way before puck drop. And it's always exciting, Don, just to watch stadiums just kind of fill up. And it get, definitely is, again, the uh, the afternoon. It goes into the evening. And Obviously, it's, you know, closing in on the 6 o'clock hour here on the East Coast. We'll see a lot more fans coming up here for the uh, 7.30 game the, between uh, St. John's Prep and Burlington. 
Puck goes back to the line, and a big wrist shot again by Wooden right on the mark, and the save made by Gingris, who's been the busier of the two goalkeepers. Been beaten once already. Coming in with the eight shutouts, that goal's against average at 1.20. Yeah, eight shutouts, too, of course. Obviously, that's not going to be a shutout tonight. I know we talked about that. Kornak also, he's got eight shutouts as well, so... Do the math almost every other three days. They basically both individuals would have had an average of shutout. I like that stat there. This is Wooden from behind the net. Wheeled it to the near side. Andover trying to hustle after to keep it in. And it is kept in. Nice play there by Leone. Puck on the firewall. Wooden will reverse it near side. Jacob skating after. Goes back to the far side to Wooden. Wooden looking for some open space. And he'll just air mail it down ice. And it should go. No, icing is going to be waved off. Both teams taking an opportunity to put out fresh troops. Pass comes ahead and quickly squirted along by Tavener. Tavener has given a chase to it, but he couldn't get to it in time. Now a pass thrown behind Quilty, and this time it will be an icing call against the Harbinman. 207 remaining in the first, still 1-0 Hingham. You know, I'm wondering here, Don, for Andover's sake, I mean, again, mind you, only two, goal, two shots on goal. They've obviously flung the puck around when they've been on the offensive end. How important really is here for Andover to try to get that first goal here? Obviously, again, pregame jitters, first time playing in the Super 8, three years obviously being on the outside. Certainly they seem to be settling in, but that first goal could really be critical here. I think my cameraman's having a little problem with the camera. They will fix, we'll fix them up between the periods as that's thrown down ice. And on goal, Shingas will make the save. One fifty-two remaining in the period. Timmy Carroll actually uh, checked that faceoff taken by Kenny. He was 37. Carroll's a little smaller than Kenny. Puck to the far corner. Taken here by Keeler. Played it on behind the net. Lachance dancing out right in front of his own net. Trying to skate away from the forward check of Quilty, and he's turned on back. Lachance to wind it up again. Cuts to the left wing side across that blue line. And that turn back at center by Kenny. In transition, the Harbinman work it along. Knocked down on the play was Higgins. Puck thrown across ice by Jake Higgins. He has an assist here today. And back the other way. Shot from the wing wall. Rather harmless as Riley let it go. And it's going to be held on to. So we got a faceoff upcoming with 116 remaining. The cameraman's uh, tripod on the pot on him here. We'll help him out. I'm going to watch him struggle for the next 160. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jeff's, Jeff's doing the best he can. He yeah. is. We'll have to figure out what happened. Puck is down inside the end over zone. Doing a nice job keeping it as straight as he can. I like that, see? He's talented. <laughs> 60 seconds remaining in the period. Lachance again cuts in front of his own net. Backhands it out to center ice. Going to be collected. And scoot it onto the near side to Jacobs. Jacobs will throw it to the Andover line. Archambault will play it down ice and will go for an icing call. You know, when you take a look at this, and Andover's never been in a situation like this. They don't have a tradition of winning hockey championships. You take a look at the uh, Hingham team, obviously they do. And, right. You know, you get through this first period, you're down just one goal. Things change a little bit, I think, for the Golden Warriors as this game moves on. They become more comfortable. Oh, I, th I think so. I mean, it's 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 just like uh, whether like, for any type of sport, like, you know, intermission, opportunity, just to kind of regroup, talk about what you need to do better, what you know, what went well, you know, here and there. And I, I think, yeah, you know, I think for Andover's sake, look, Hingham has been here. They obviously are experienced. Uh, they play a very tough, talented schedule as much as obviously Andover does outside of its conference in the DCL. But nothing, I agree with you, nothing wrong with being down one one goal and, you know, figure out what you need to do, and you need to generate more opportunities if you're Andover, especially on offense. Tell you one thing they need to do is win faceoffs in their defensive end. As we were chatting for a moment there, they got a good shot on goal from the blue line off the stick of Jake Higgins, and that came off a faceoff victory. Got to win those defensive draws. Cutting across the line is Higgins. Had his pocket picked as he tried to turn it up ice. That was thrown to the far side. Eight seconds remaining in the period. Looks like this one's going to end with him on top by the score of 1-0. The goal scored 7-34 of the first period. A tally by the pointman, Tommy Kornak. The helper's going to Higgins and Carroll. 
for the one nothing lead. Well, interesting start here, Don. I think the thing that Hingham right now has got to take care of to continue this momentum here. They're up one nothing, and just as we alluded to, they're going to have to certainly, if you're Andover, find ways to start generating offense. But some good play thus far, though, by the goalies. All right, let's save our cameraman, uh, Jeff Lane. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Stay with us right here on the NFHS Network. part about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I want to encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. Coaches teach your kids to dream. Coaches teach your kids to overcome. Coaches teach your kids good sportsmanship. Coaches teach your kids proper technique. But who teaches your coaches? about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I want to encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride.
Welcome right back here to the Songus Center. We're through one period of play of this Division 1A tournament game. It's round one, double elimination tournament. It's kind of easy. Uh, four games over the next two days. The winners all stay in the winner's bracket, and they play again on uh, next Monday. 
And the teams that lose, well, they'll fight uh, uh, for their playoff uh, opportunity to be extended in the elimination portion <laughs> of the tournament. Uh, very true, very true. But, you know, the, the interesting thing, though, if you look at the, the past couple of years, it's it's been interesting to see those teams that have kind of fallen into the de facto losers bracket. It's a tough cl- it's a tough you know it's tough sledding as they would say in football to get back up to that situation. So I think as we talked about Don at the end of the last period, Andover down one nothing in a way that's a little bit of a victory you know uh, a, you know kind of a victory for them because hey guess what they're in this game. Hingham obviously has been here. Okay guess what now the coach can say hey we bet now you've gotten 15 minutes on this ice. Now let's pull, go out and play a really good another 15 more minutes, and let's go out and play an additional 15 minutes after that. It's going to be an interesting tournament. The top seed is Central Catholic. They played in the championship game a year ago, lost a heartbreaker to Arlington. And for Arlington, a huge win for a public school, and uh, they did that in overtime. So they beat Central Catholic. Central Catholic right back here as a number one seed. Boston College High School, number two, St. John's Prep is three. Hingham, the team you're witnessing right here on the ice now, is four. And over five, they're playing. Burlington, St. John, Shrewsbury, and Pope Francis rounding out the top eight teams, I guess you consider, in the state of Massachusetts. Right, and it's it's always interesting because if I have this correct, I've got, the committee will have at least 11 or 12 teams. And, you know, unfortunately, there's going to be those teams, like a Wellesley, for example, that's playing, I think, in D2. They're, they're a team right now that they've got some motivation. And they say to themselves, okay, so we may have not made it to the – this particular tournament, but guess what? Let's go out in our own tournament. Uh, a team like Stoneham and Danvers, two other teams that you're familiar with, probably from back in your day, and not trying to date yourself too far, Don, where you know the traditions they have there. Those are two top D2 North teams. They could square off in that D2 uh, North championship. Then that could be really fun. But as we alluded to at the top of the broadcast, really good time right now. I was at a high school basketball game the other night covering, and it, it's just an exciting time where you see a team rally to win, and we can see that here tonight. I mean, again, a lot of time left. Both squads coming on to the ice for period number two. Andover's made their way on. We're awaiting Hingham to make their appearance. Golden Warriors uh, have never played in a Division I-A tournament. Merely could be the biggest storyline uh, to their season and to their success uh, making their way to the ice surface here at the Sangas tonight as Hingham comes back on the ice. Hingham won a Division I-A championship what in 2010 d1 champs in 2015 so they have recent history if you do the mathematics some of these seniors and maybe a couple of these juniors were part of that program right right and you know that's that's the foundation that they've built again it's it's you know they, they got a huge following on social media here too Tom. we're not talking about a, a i mean they clearly are a well-respected program across the state and you know again they're in this and you know i think for the thing too don you understand this as well Predominantly over the years, you think about schools like Springfield Central, uh, you know, to or to the Pope Francis's, St. John's Prep, BC Highs, Austin Prep, Malden Catholics, and to have these you know, public schools be in the mix shows that hey, there is some really good public school hockey. And again, it, it was a you know, you and I were not in that room in Franklin, Massachusetts, so we don't know exactly what it came down to. But you're putting out some really good hockey products here. And again, as we've also seen, more fans are starting to show up. And this is what also is the best part about the tournament. The fans showing up, showing their support, showing their hometowns, whether they're alums, whether they're parents or friends. They're here to support and they're here to watch some good hockey. Kornak will defend down to our right. He'll touch the puck at the drop here. We're underway in the second period. And Chingris is to our left-hand side defending the goal for Andover. 24 square feet behind each goaltender. Four by six. Six feet long, four feet high of those nets. Not easy to put a puck behind these goalies. They combined for 16 shutouts together through the regular season. Icing call here against Hingham. They have the 1-0 lead just tuning in. Goal by defenseman Tommy Kornack, his second of the year. Carroll won the faceoff, slid it on to Higgins, and Higgins put it midpoint for the 1-0 lead. And it's going to be interesting now. Here we see Andover in the uh, on offense. They really need to capitalize here because the one thing that they struggled with, I mean, it took about a couple minutes until they were really able to get a shot on net. And that's the thing, Don, that we need to see here in the second period. Andover's now play that first 15 minutes. Now it's an opportunity to play a really good solid 15 minutes, and I think they're certainly capable of it. Yeah, it might start with some face-off wins in both the offense and defensive end. It was a face-off loss in the offense in their defensive end that led to a goal. Here's a bouncing puck and a shot. Whistled wide by Dillman. Might have been deflected, never reached. Kornak. 
Uh, puck onto the stick of Riley. Worked it in front, and quick shot is falling to the ice by Dillman. So Dillman with a couple of chances there, and Arbiman will send it back down. Golden Warrior netminder Chingris helps his own cause, played at the center. Pass up ahead, tipped off the stick of Stevie Ingram. Ingram right now, a little sloppy getting it out of their zone. Andover's come out, a little more gusto in there. Forecheck bumped down on the far side with Ingram, but the puck is behind the net, looking for it and circling away from the puck was Murray as he couldn't do much down there. As Ingram well defended behind their goal, and it's lugged down ice by Kenny and thrown down into the Andover end. Well, that's certainly, certainly a way to get things started here. I mean, get that forecheck started. Obviously, they, they're uh, slinging pucks around, and that's eventually going to have to happen. I mean, you're seeing Kornak come out of the net a couple times, too, so you wonder <laughs> if they can take advantage of an opportunity when he's out of the net. Shot by Jacobs, knocked down. That one finds its way through by Wooden. That's stopped by Shingris, and the shot total continues to rise up to 11 now unofficially for Hingham. They have outshot this Andover team 2-1. to one. And the puck held on to. And the faceoff upcoming. And now if you're and over here, this is an opportunity, as Don alluded to, just being able to get some face-off opportunity, get some face-off wins, and they certainly could utilize that. And whistles will sound. Crowd also starting to get a more involved with this one. I think my, I think my tripod's too fancy for my camera. Guy. I was, was going to say, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I was warming up the play-by-play -play pipes here for you, Dan. As a shot goes off the side of the net, collected on behind by Lachance. Lachance is going to play it up the wall, kept in near side by Wooden. You know, just like how it's a team effort on the ice, it's a team effort Absolutely. up here. Absolutely, we, we can't forget about that, Don. Absolutely. If I didn't trust you, I would have left the headset on. <laughs> <laughs> 12.34 remaining in the second period. Hingham with a 1-0 lead. Lone goal back in the first. Andover fans on the far side trying to get the team going down there on the ice. That's Kuda taking the faceoff. He wears number five for Andover. Went up against Carroll. Carroll, good faceoff guy is Timmy Carroll. Still looking for his first goal of the season according to all the stats he passed along to me. Well, we can thank the great uh, Rick Comfort, obviously, for keeping stats. Obviously, the coaches were, uh, some of the coaches were obviously, it was great to connect with some of them and just kind of get their, their feedback and their stats, too. And it's a lot of good numbers, obviously, we're seeing there. So we'll see if we can get that first number, at least uh, lit, get that lamp lit up. Buck sent diagonally into the far side by Bellucci. And it's going to be collected by Jacobs. Jacobs over the blue line. Went blue line to blue line to Sullivan, and he'll just toss it deep and look for the line change. We'll hang him again. To the far side, Taverner. Open space, long stretch pass. Didn't have much intent to that. Now it's kicked around between the blue lines and collected by Sullivan, and Sullivan will send it on. Chased down by Finlay behind the net. Couldn't get to it. Andover trying to get it out. There's a fatuitous bounce, and here they come. They got a three on two. One of the first odd man rushes tonight as Leone throws it in on goal, and no rebound as Kornak came out to cover. That's what they need is a few more odd man rushes, but recognize that fact and get a good shot on goal. That was from a distance out. Yeah, no, they did. And that, that's exactly what they needed. When you had the three on two going down the ice, that was exactly something, okay, here's a chance that Andover has. But you definitely agree. I, I agree with you, though, Don. I mean, they've come out here more with a pep in the step right now and got a little bit of something going under here. So we'll see if they can get some odd man rushes and even just continue to sling it on net. Caden Dillman had it at center ice, drops it into the Hingham in. Puck to the far side. Harbin really dominated the first period of play here in the second. Andover trying to return the favor. They'll just chop it down ice, and Dillman will give a chase after it. Taken by Jake Higgins. Higgins will play it to the far side. Going to be kept in. Chop from the blue line. Breaks off the glove of Kornak. I don't think he really saw that. As that was a long, long shot by Dillman from the blue line there. And the puck chipped back off the glass at center ice. Collected by Jake Higgins across the line. Higgins sweeps to the circle. Quick shot, and that's deflected in on the goalkeeper, and Jingers will hold on for the faceoff. MIAA presenting the 2018 Division 1A Ice Hockey Tournament. Special thanks to Richard Pearson and Mr. Haley. Barry doing a great job. Athletic Director Concord Carlisle. Always heavily involved with the selections for this Division 1A tournament, and 
keeping everything just right. Loves the game of hockey. Back to the line. Packard will keep it in, try to get a shot through, deflected away. Classy. Frankie Higgins behind the net. Classy individual, too, as we talked about. Conquer Carlisle. I think this is his last year also as an AD. A lot of guys starting to retire. Saw Phil Sheridan down below. The former athletic director out of Peabody High School is retired. I guess he got a letter in the mail and it said, you know what? You can retire. So his wife said, do it. <laughs> so he did. Hey, you know, you, uh, from working in college athletics, you know, I, I've, I've had the good fortune of obviously getting to know some of these high school athletic directors, but they put a lot of good work in and, you know, they put a, they put a lot of time in, a lot of nights and weekends and away from families. And But great to always have them out here. They're always a great part. It's always good to run into people and say hi to them. Just introduce yourself and. Uh, say thank you for what they do uh, to promote their pro respective programs. This is Clark carrying into the corner. Clark able to stick handle down below the goal line extended, and he gets bumped off the puck by Archambault, Archambault and now it's taken on by Lachance. Lachance and company play it to the near side. He wants to put a stick to it there. That's Terrace. Terrace has thrown the biggest check of the night by far. Did that back in the first period. Back to the line now. Thrown towards goal. Off the stick of Jacobs and... Another save by Chingris, and he'll hold on for the faceoff. Well, I know we've harped a lot on Robbie Kornak, but let's not forget about Cole Chingris. I mean, one boasting a 1.20 goals against average compared to Chingris, obviously 1.29. He's faced quite a lot of shots this season here, 402 saves coming into tonight's contest. And, you know, it's, it's almost like that old that analogy. If you score on one of these goalies, just keep the puck. Yeah, keep it as a souvenir. Puck is on down now. Jacobs a chase it. Jacobs in the far corner has good size. He just gave the puck away, however, to Kuda. Kuda played it back of the corner, and right there on it is Caleb Wooden. Puck slides all the way to the point near side. Matthew Bellucci played it back. Game of, uh, here, you can have it. I'll take it back. Not much going on right now here in the second period. 8.40 remaining. Got three Golden Warriors on the far side on the forward check, so there's open room near side for Joe Jacobs. Jacobs slow to get to it, however, able to spin it up the wall. Looking for a little help to get it out there with Joe Sullivan. Kept in at the line, and that shot ricochets off the skids. Bellucci let it go. Puck far side now to Wooden. Finally, the Harbinman able to saucer it out to center rice. Going to be chased down near side by Jack Murray. Played it back between the blue line. Joe Jacobs perhaps wanting to get off. He's had a long shift. We'll send it down and look for that line change. As Andover behind their net. 8.06 remaining, nearly midway through the contest. 1 0. Hingham leading. Winner remains in the winner's bracket. That's an obvious. The loser moves on to the elimination bracket in play later this week. Puck down into the Andover end. Chingers will clear it to the line, but not out. Kept in by Carroll. Carroll, a dangerous player, has an assist here in the game. Carries it to the far corner, laid it off behind net. Going to be taken away there by Dillman. Dillman reverses smartly to the near side to Murray. Murray finds some open space to the glass, and it's out to center ice. Collected there by Higgins, thrown right in. Shingers had to stop that one too. Keep that goalie moving, right? Uh, they got to keep do, got to keep moving. But he's coming up with every opportunity, every, every stop though. Don, well, this is Murray trying to break across the line. Lost an edge, fell on down. He had the defenseman for Andover retreating out of the zone, including Jake Lachance, and allowed Hingham to just clear it out. Now it's thrown right back in from behind in that corner. Act goal scorer in the contest. Played it off to his defense partner. That's Jack Higgins who had a helper. Higgins with five goals shows a lot of productivity along the blue line. He now has 14 assists in the season. Lobs it to the blue line, glove down, and put the whole thing offside. Faceoff upcoming, seven minutes straight up remaining in the stanza. And you mentioned just the fact that, hey, it's been a little bit of a quieter second period. This middle frame a little different than what we saw in that first period. And I, I think the, the biggest storyline right now is just the fact that Andover, a little bit more aggressive, not afraid to get after it and that four check but right now we see Hingham here going the other way Kenny with a backhander to save is made Shing was able to cut down that angle again they produce a little offense off a of face off just outside their own blue line Buck played to Kenny again Kenny trying to get it out with that long reach can't poked out with the long reach of Shane Lachance and now Puck squirts at the near wall taken there by Quilty played across ice off some skates and sticks and Lachance will chase it down a chance behind the net. They angle him into the corner. Good aggression on the forecheck. Oh, point blank shot what there a save. by Frankie Higgins. And Shingris with a big stop. Uh, what a save. I mean, that could have been da I mean, that's dangerous uh, territory right there. Hingham with a great opportunity to sling it by 
Chingris and just the fact that he was able to come up with that stop, point blank shot, that's that's important for him. I mean, that we, we'd be looking at a different game right now here, Don. I'll tell you what, that was well designed by Hingham right there. The chance carried into the corner. They trapped him there with two players and going right to the right spot was Higgins. Puck coughed up and you're right, the point blank shot. Chingris coming up with perhaps his finest save. Well, Jacobs can't keep it in. Here's a break down the left wing by Dillman. Dillman tees it up and drives a high scorching slapper. Takes a bounce to the front of the net. That went off the corner glass and took a funny bounce towards the front. Here, Dillman maybe probably wanted to have that shot back. I think he got the pressure on him pretty quickly by Hingham. Good job of the defense. Jacobs a center. Thrown down ice by Quilty. Taken off the far wall by Kenny. Couldn't do much with it. Dillman retreats deep behind his own net. Puts the brakes on. He'll just throw it up a hedge, waiting at the blue line was at. Actually, that was uh, looked at the long, wrong roster. That was Riley trying to make the catch of that pass there. Now the puck sent back the other way, and it will go for an icing call against Hingham. 5.35 remaining in the period, still 1-0 Hingham. Well, I think right now the question that I have here, Don, is, okay, we've seen some, some odd man rushes. We've seen some opportunities for Andover. That defense is generating but they've got to find a way to get the shots. And a lot of these shots obviously are flying quite, you know, they're flying left and right of Robbie Kornack. They've got to find a way to get on that. And I don't know, they've got, they haven't really gone down the slot much really. You know, Hingham's done a nice job defensively in their zone. They haven't really allowed a shot between the dots. That puck sticked out of play. One off of Jacob Clark sticking out into the Hingham bench. And the faceoff upcoming. Jake Higgins out there along with also Tommy Kornack. I mean, guys that have delivered, especially for goal scoring chances, the two of them, they've combined for 26 assists. They've combined for the goal here tonight, too. But they did. From center, Arpin will send it deep behind the net, collected by Kornack. Tommy plays it to the far side. Arpin on the forward check trying to keep it in, looking for some help from Archambault. They continue to do a nice job along that wall on the offensive end. Now it squirts free to the racing Kornak. Kornak will just smartly play it off to Higgins. Higgins with plenty of space and tried to work it up the middle and out of the zone. It's going to be chopped down and stolen away by Arpin and sent right back in. Left behind the net, digging after it was Feeney. Couldn't get to it, however. Kornak on the far side for the Harbiman. Again, they go cross ice with that breakout pass. That could be dangerous. Wait for one of those to be plucked away and lead to a good scoring chance. A lot of defensemen at the high school level make that long pass diagonally through center ice, and that's very dangerous. Got a high stick of the puck and a face-off upcoming, and it will be all the way back in the end-over zone. Never like that. <laughs> the high sticking or the, uh, the, cr the cross, the cross ice pass I was going to say. defensive corner is like, why? Puck back to line to Jacob. Shot to a screen, knocked down as Hingham wins yet another faceoff. They have dominated in that category, and it's really helped them to this 1-0 lead, and probably one of the reasons why Andover not getting quality shots. Puck kept into line by Jacobs. Another shot. That deflects off a body and wide of the goal. Well, puck back to the corner to Tommy Tavener. All right, that's not a number, obviously. The, I mean, you keep it in the college game, you keep it in the professional game. We haven't seen the faceoff stats tonight. And that'd be really something interesting to, to examine, say, how, how they've done. Ingram with a shot, save, and it's going to be covered up by Kornak. So Ingram stole the puck, came down the right wing side here, and again, good job by Kornak not to leave a rebound with 3.57 remaining in the second period in a 1-0 game. Now can Andover win an offensive zone face lock. I got... Leone to take the face off. He wins it on back. They play at left point. Shot to a screen, deflected in on goal. Jake Lachance with a shot that was deflected. See you win a face off. Good things will happen. Kornak had to make a save top of the crease. And just a little quick a little nugget here. Terra is obviously who scored that goal, that first, uh, lone goal tonight. He has two game winning goals here, Don. So if the if chalk holds and things stay the way they are, there'll be three uh three to add on. Our correction. Puck played ahead and down inside the Hingham zone. Taken by Jacobs. Now it's played up ahead to the far right wing side. Carried in by Kenny. Couldn't do much with it along the wall. Into the corner goes Higgins. Higgins got 
belted down. We got the games for his penalty. It's going to go against the Golden Warriors in a opportunity now on the power play for the Harbormen. Well, the Harbormen this season, though, Don, their power play unit 13 of 46. That's the power play. They're a little higher on the numbers for penalty kills, but so they've converted on 13 of 46 opportunities. Here's opportunity number 47 on the season. 11.35, time of the infraction in the Sin Bin Leone for tripping. Harbormen win the draw. Play at the space on the far side. Collected by Clark. Clark to the circle. Back midpoint goes to Higgins. His shot through. Knocked down in front. Chingris will find it and cover. Oh, it was just hanging out there, wasn't it? Big, big play. Good shot from the blue line. And with 3.09 remaining in the period. 145 on the penalty. Off the face off. Get a quick whistle. And we're going to get a penalty call. It's going to be an interference call. And this will even things up. This is going against Hingham. So they tried to set a play on the drop. And uh, Quilty, guilty of the interference. And that will even things up for the next 142. Eleven fifty-four. time of the penalty. Shot. Blocked out to center ice. Well, Andover had a chance on the drop there. Now back the other way comes Higgins to the corner. Should be interesting. Four on four. This is Jacob Clark. Clark coming side of the goal, trying to stuff it in. Now he's back behind the net. Clark played it on to the blue line. Collected there by Kornak. Kornak back to Clark. Just out of his reach. Tavener going after it. Tavener to control it. Taken away by Clark. Clark holding high slot. Fed it to the front of the net. Look at the Higgins. Well, finally collected by Feeney. Feeney rounds the net with space. Skating ahead being hunted down by Terrace and knocked down by Terrace. Terrace, a very physical player. Now he steals it. A chase for the puck. Shingris comes out. Good calculated risk. Played it to the line at center. Looks like the Harbourman with the advantage here in the four-on-four opportunity. It'll be an abbreviated power play for Andover in 42 seconds. Puck sent down ice, and this should go, and it will for an icing call. Yeah, you're right. The, the, the energy right now by Hingham, just is, it's, it's something that Andover's got to find a way to match here because Hingham obviously is being able to find more, continue to just penetrate and continue to, to push that puck towards the net. And right now, again, another face-off one here, Don, by Hingham. And that's continuing to be another part, another uh, another wrinkle to the story here. Terrace will send it cross ice, collected off the wall by Jake Lachance. Retreats behind the net, trying to come to the near side, being harassed there. Terrace going after it, but comes back to Lachance, and Lachance will find some space behind. Quickly comes out left side, trying to skate past Kenny. Whips it cross ice to his defense partner. Power play will start in about five seconds. It'll be short, however, of about, uh, what did we say, 18 seconds 18 so. seconds. And over, trailing 1-0, 124 remaining in the period. They travel from left to right, and here they come. Their power play is underway. That'll be it short, just 10 seconds remaining on it, and a long shot in, and that's going to be stopped. Arpin let it go, and easy stop for corner. And Andover, we, we, we preach about this, Don, throughout the second period. They have to find ways to score goals and go down the middle at some point because a lot of their attempts are coming from the far sides and the wings or the blue line, as we just saw right there. And that's just not going to cut it. Andover trying to get a shot on goal. Both squad now back at even strength as Quilty is back on the ice. So Andover... Whacking at that puck out in a slot there. Never got it through and into the into the net. Now Kornak has scored. Tommy will use the boards. Played it up ahead. 47 seconds remaining here in the second period. Much better period perhaps for Andover here. They still trail one to nothing. Another turnover by Hingham in their defensive end. And swatted the center safely by Jake Higgins. Bellucci rolls it in on Kornak. Sticks it to the far corner. Up ice it comes to Quilty. Quilty will bank it on. And with 23 seconds left, Harbinman in the midst of a line change. 
This is game one of two tonight on the NFHS Network right here from the Sangus Center in Lowell, Massachusetts. Ten seconds remaining in the period. It looks like it's going to be a scoreless period unless uh, something surprises us in the next three seconds. It's highly doubtful as nobody's really got a good handle to it. And there you go. There's your horn. So we played two, Matt, and one nothing score. Hang him with that goal in the first. Yeah, you know that that that's the that's the difference here. And you know, I thought early on as we as you were talking about, hey, we're seeing more of an opportunity here for you know Andover to possibly get some goal scoring chances, but they have a really critical 15 minutes coming up here, Don. And it, this is this is it. I mean, that I think in my mind, you got that 10 minute period right out right off the bat where between 15 minutes and five minutes, you've really got to figure out ways to get to get to it. But it's been the Hingham defense tonight. That Hingham defense obviously is generated, and it also is, again, the opportunities we've seen true. Also with um, just seeing also just the opportunities that are coming right now here with uh, from the face-offs. That's obviously a huge part of it. All right, Zamboni's coming onto the ice surface. We'll take a quick break. Back with us. Well, third period already. Wow, time flies at the Sangha <laughs> Center. All right, this is Adam. Take two. Mark. Yes. <laughs> I go like this. <laughs> the best part about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I want to encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. Coaches teach your kids to dream. Coaches teach your kids to overcome. Coaches teach your kids good sportsmanship. Coaches teach your kids proper technique. But who teaches your coaches? about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I want to encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. Over the years, Friendlies has been dedicated to supporting organizations that benefit children of all ages, and we're proud to partner with the MIAA as its official family restaurant. Friendlies looks forward to aiding high schools in their athletes with fundraising events and programming throughout the year, all to promote our shared ideals of good character, sportsmanship, and active lifestyles. Help us make the world a friendlier place for student athletes across the Commonwealth. Visit your local Friendlies for more details.
All right, back here at the Sanga Center as we settle in for the third period between the Hingham Harbourman with a 1-0 lead over the Endover Golden Warriors. And we were talking to a couple of Warrior fans, and they're hoping for a goal. Why not? They're down 1-0. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's kind of the mindset right now here is that they needed to try to get something started. And, you know, Don, I mean, the biggest thing is we saw what they did. They came out in that second period. They were able to get the four check going, able to get a couple of on-man rushes. And right now, I mean, th- th- this is a critical time because – I think you'd agree. You got a 10-minute window here. If you can't score in that 10-minute window, the final five minutes are going to be really nerve wracking You know, it's going to be really tough for them to get get on the board. All right, face off to come at center to get it going here in the third period. Folks still making their way in. Of course, we got another game: Burlington and St. John's Prep to battle, and our nightcap at about 7:30 or so. 15 minutes of hockey here, maybe more. Who knows? Double elimination tournament presented by the MIAA. Long goal back in the first period. Tommy Kornack, even strength from the blue line. to give the Harbin in the 1-0 lead. Came off a face-off win. Carroll and Higgins, that's Jake Higgins, picking up the assist along with Timmy Carroll. This is Lachance. Nice backhand pass. Tipped along now to Leone. Leone with some speed in. We've had a penalty aside in the game. That's it. Each team whistled back in the second period nearly simultaneously, so each team on abbreviated power plays a 0 for 1. I think that brings us up to speed for the most part on everything. Hingham out shooting Andover. Offside against the Golden Warriors. We were sitting down for the first period. We must be excited now. We're all standing up. I was going to say, we all, we all are. You know, it's... It's like the equivalent of in football, Don, where they put four fingers in the air and they say that, which is the kind of the, it's go time. Left to right, that's Joe Jacobs. Hing him in the white jerseys, the home jerseys. And over the away team, number five seed in this tournament. And Hing him the number four seed. Top seed is Central Catholic. We'll see them play tomorrow night. Buck played up the wall, took a funny bounce into the circle, and here comes Feeney. Feeney racing down the right wing side. Snaps one on goal, and... Kornak will make the save. I'll tell you what, they have not had many shots in which Kornak hasn't seen the puck coming towards them here in this game. They haven't been able to set many screens, a lot of the shots from a distance out. Right, and that, that, that's been a, a huge issue that Andover has not been able to overcome, and they, they have to find a way to do it here in this period. They want a face-off. Tavener just slid one wide of the fire post. Puck squirts back to the line. Colucci with a shot. Nice save by Kornak. Andover getting more shots now through here in this third period, which is a good sign. Had a few blocked back early on. From the blue line, another shot. That time it is blocked away as Tavener tried to drive it through. Bellucci trying to knock it through, and that was knocked right back to it. Glove down neatly. Snap towards goal by Bellucci, and Warnack again. A little busier here in the third. Andover with a good stretch on the four check right there. Now they'll send it in from center right and look for the line change. Harbinman back in their own zone. Puck sent a vacant space on the far side. First one on it is Lachance. Shane couldn't do much with it. It's back to center and is collected and sent back in by Jake Lachance. Where's the C in the jersey as a captain? Puck far side, still free. Andover has it. High slot, quick shot, sneaky little bit there by Ingram. He's had a couple of chances here in this game now. Back to the line. Another shot, knocked down in front, kicked away by defenseman Jacobs to the far side. They're still grinding it. Nice pass back to the blue line. Another shot, finds its way through, and a score! That was redirected on the doorstep. Shane Lachance with the goal, and over with the relentless attack. They work the puck around the perimeter beautifully, and they light the lamp. I think Keeler will pick up a help or two. We'll wait and see. Well, it, it was inevitable. It was just it had to happen, and just you know, we saw early on in that you know that kind of before that goal developed, getting people, getting players in front of the net, getting some screens, and that just throwing it on net. Obviously, right place, right time, and now a little bit of a boost here for Andover and their fans, pretty pi- fired up over it. So it's brand new, tied at one here early on. Time of the goal is two sixteen. We'll await the official word. It was certainly redirected. Andover steals it at center ice. Leone will jump it into the Harbiman zone. Hingham right now, a little bit discombobulated. It was a chance with the score. Keeler and Ingram picking up the helpers on the goal. I knew there was going to be a second one there. 
So it is now 1-1. Hingham coming back. They center it into the slot. Trying to pull the trigger was Quilty. Just couldn't get the shot away. Another shot. Redirects it on the doorstep. Shingers might have got a pace as Higgins sent it dangerously in front. Now collected by Kenny. Kenny's pass is deflected away by Bellucci to the far wall. And uh, Andover says, we've seen enough. They'll ice it here in the face-off upcoming. So the goal energized the Harbourman. And they have a couple of chances tied at one in the third. Oh, that they do. That they do. And, you know, we, we watched the first period. They finally get on the board. And they finally get on the board and... You know, they finally get on the board here, Don, and that's now we're starting to see a little bit more inspired hockey from both sides here because you saw Hingham wins wins the face of the ensuing faceoff and immediately goes down and challenges Andover. So we're tied at one now. No icing to be called. Puck behind the Hingham net. Collected there by Mikey Carroll. Carroll got tied up. Andover steals it away. Quick shot. And that miss to the short side as they continue to dominate here in this period. That shot off the stick of Ingram who's been a vital clog in what's going on right now. Now it's Lachance worked at side of the goal. Ingram couldn't handle it. It's taken by Jacob Clark. And Clark down the far left wing side cuts to the middle of the ice surface. And he's across the line. Boy, Andover just allowed a free skate into the zone. Clark will send it on deep looking for a line change. Taken by O'Brien. Puck played far side. Bouncing puck. Elusive. Nobody wants to put a handle to it. And finally the hot potato is sent down in to the Hingham zone. <laughs> Arpin couldn't do much. Skated along by Sullivan. Shot deflected up and out of play here at the Sangus. Went into the netting that protects fans when they do sit behind the goal. Face off coming to the right hand side of Cole Chingris. Junior netminder. They're going to do it again. It was a broken stick down in the hang of end. That's $225 worth of stick going into that penalty box on the far side. They are not cheap. Again, Hingham wins a faceoff. Shot by Kenny goes wide of the goal. Actually, that was Wooden, 33. Hingham trying to find some rhythm now offensively. Andover's stolen the momentum and had the better chances. They've scored the only goal here in the third. Hingham's way back in the first to the line to Jacob. Shot on. Chingris to save, and he'll hold for the faceoff. Yeah, you can definitely tell Hingham definitely wants to get ahead again. You can just, I mean, they're, they're, that, that goal clearly, not saying they were kind of in a cruise control mode, but obviously that goal really obviously kind of has lit, lit the flame here for them, and they're skating a little bit more harder, it seems like, this period right now. Not saying they weren't last period. Trying to cut to the middle and turn back was Dillman. Andover gaining confidence as this game moves along. It looked a, like they were a little jittery back in the first period. First time ever in the D1A tournament. Oh, they give up some ground again, however. Shot save, rebound. Shingris got that too. Puck still side of the goal. They'll finally cover. They allow Fidley and company to just walk into the zone. That is the second time they've done that over the last couple of minutes. And you cannot give up the blue line like that. No, you can't. You can't. And right now, <laughs> Chigris standing on his head. I mean, since that goal, that only goal he's allowed tonight, he really has regrouped quite well. He had some, obviously, some, you know, that point blank shot we saw back in the second period, seeing what we just saw a second ago with that flurry of action. And you run right now, he knows how he is not willing, does not want to allow that second goal. But hang him desperately, trying to figure out how do they get that puck's finding a way past him one more time. Puck squirts free, taken by Kavanagh. Kavanagh played it to the line, kept in by Higgins. The shot goes whistling wide, creeping in right point, Cornack. Tommy played it to the near side. Came a keep away. Nobody wants to put a good handle to it again. Now it's going to be onto the stick of Higgins just momentarily. Kept it at the line by Jake Higgins. Now he kicks at it, got it up ahead to Frankie. Frankie Higgins sends it to the front of the net and off the toe of Chingris. Quilty played it to the corner. Puck deflected back out towards the blue line. Quilty will send it to Agley far side. Taken there by Bellucci. Bellucci knocked down but got it out of the zone. He did his job. Down to 8.44 remaining in the third. We're tied at one. 
Burlington and St. John's coming your way in just a bit. That puck out of play, a souvenir for a lucky fan on the far side. I used to have a great collection of hockey pucks back in the day when I we worked in college hockey out at Merrimack and Quinnipiac University in Havit. Every rink I went to, I used to collect one of those and those hockey pucks. They all had a logo on it, and I gave them all to my grandson. <laughs> he loves them. Well, I got a hockey puck on my net on my desk here, Don. It's from uh, the original Frozen Fenway. With those teams uh, that they had UMass, but you had the three non-New England, the other three New England teams up in up north, Vermont, Maine, and uh, New Hampshire. It was a fun day, although I think it was, if I recall, 60 degrees at faceoff time. It was yeah, a I can imagine. mild winter, 2011-12. Uh, Stolen along the wall by Terrace. Terrace shot goes short side off the twine. Back on it. Plays it back to the line left side to Wooden. Shot found its way through. And again, the goaltender there is Shingris. Holds his guard, does a nice job in the blue. Yeah, Chingris right now, I really think, Don, you got to say is he knows any opportunity that comes his way, he has got to find a way to stop it because otherwise that particular goal really could be the difference here. Off the faceoff, it is collected and sent ahead. Here's a break. Across the line comes Feeney. He'll get the shot on. He was looking for an angle. Hornack handles easily. Good break out there by the Golden Warriors. They haven't had the buck down the offensive end in quite some time. They scored at 216 of this, this third period of play to tie it at one apiece. That's where we sit now. Jacobs couldn't get it out. Kornak from behind the net. Laid it there. It's taken by Minkin. Minkin it tied up. Trying to keep it at the line is Taverner. And that puck squirts out of play. Got a faceoff upcoming. Both benches to the near side directly below us. So the far side, the sin bins. We've only had two penalties called. Yeah, otherwise, I think it's been a pretty clean game. I mean, the referees, you know, we saw a couple of calls. We probably could have been a 50-50 call head-to-head -head right there. But, you know, look, hey, it's trying to let these young men play, have the opportunity again. This is a great tournament. It's great to be a part of it. And they obviously don't want to have the story be about them. Face-off win. Ingram with a shot and a save made. And a beauty by Kornak. Another face-off to come. Sammy Murray to take the draw. He just won the last one. Wins another. Got it to his teammate Lachance. Lachance with the goal to tie it up here in the third period. Lachance digging after it. This line has caused some havoc. Harbourman have had some problems with him. This is Tommy Kornak. Oh, with he just level. He had the head down, and he really was walloped by Bellucci. Puck eventually went to the front of the net. I thought for a second maybe the arm would go up for an elbow on Bellucci, but no call was made. Yeah, I was wondering the same thing here, too. I mean, that was one big hit. Faceoff coming to the right of Cole Chingris. Off the faceoff, Frankie Higgins. For the Harbinman. Wanted to the corner. Now it's taken away by Leone. Cycled to the near left side to Lachance and played diagonally cross ice. Tipped along and offside is Andover. So a faceoff upcoming. 7.02 remaining in the third. Still tied at one. Get a feeling that the next one will decide this game. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, right now, again, 7.02 on the clock here, Don. They've got to find you know, one of these teams. That next goal really is going to be the clincher. Puck just outside the Hingham blue line. Taken by Wooden. Slid across far side to Jacobs. Propelled out to center ice. Waiting for it. There's Leone. And he'll just bang it right back in to that Hingham end to the near side. Jacobs. Jacobs. Force it up the wall. Taken by Kenny. Knocked at the center ice. Higgins trying to barrel down the wing wall here. Get broken up on the play by Jake Lachance. Lachance trying to stay with it. Stolen by Higgins. Higgins in a high slot. Higgins fed it down low. A backhander slides wide. Oh, what a chance for Quilty. Just couldn't get it on goal. And the net came away from its mooring off the goal line. Oh, that's one he's going to want to have back. Quilty's going to be thinking about that one tonight, if, depending on how, if the outcome does not favor the Harbormen. That's one of those opportunities where it, it was almost like it's, it's like in basketball, Don. Like, don't do the second pass. If you have the lane, take it. This is O'Brien taking the face off for Hingham going up against Archambault. Puck into the corner. 
Kavaner to chase it down. Played it to the near side, and it's poked along out the center pass. Jake Higgins, he'll retreat and play it off the backboard to the far side. Kornak bumped it back to center ice. Puck will slide and roll on down into the end over end. First one on it to the corner is Terrace. Terrace tied up along the boards. They're trying to get some help from O'Brien as O'Brien couldn't tame the puck, and it's sent out a hit. Feeney across. Snap shot. Blocked away and out of play. One off the ankle of Tommy Kornack. Another faceoff upcoming down inside the Hingham zone with 5.46 remaining in the third period of play. You know, it's so fascinating is when a team that's down scores the equalizer. We see this a lot, whether it's in high school, college, even the pros. It doesn't matter what the game is. That equalizer always energizes both teams. And we're definitely seeing a different style of more up-tempo hockey, especially here with 5.39 left. Puck kept in, shot on goal, save is made. Keeler, who had an assist on the first goal by Andover. Matter of fact, the only goal coming up with a steal, long shot on. Kornak able to cover, another face-off upcoming. Andover's gotten better as the game has moved along. Hingham has been pretty steady throughout. I guess you'd have to call it evenly played. Shots on goal. 28-20 in favor of Hingham. A lot of those uh, shots back in the first period and a half or so. Higgins can't keep it in the zone. Kornak back up for Frankie Higgins. And then instead, it's going to go for an icing call against the Harbourman and a faceoff back in their end. Nice crowd here. Part of the... Uh, I guess some of the fans in the crowd now are here for the second game. Saw some folks clad in the colors of Burlington. Very patriotic looking. Off the faceoff, quick shot, knocked wide. Riley tried to wrist one towards net. Hingham has done a nice job, Matt, blocking shots. Played ahead, Frankie Higgins. Rolling down the left wing side. Threw it through the goal mouth. Long carom to the near side. Poked at. It knocked out to center ice past Kenny. And here they come again. Off that far side, dangling it, is Riley. Riley back out to center ice, and he'll bump it into the Hingham end. The laid off side was the reason why he retreated back out to center ice. Puck in front of the Hingham bench. Knocked back to the Hingham zone. Jacobs carries behind the net. Carries the puck left-handed. Stretches one through center ice. Deflects off a skate, taken by O'Brien. O'Brien, goal line extended, turns into the corner. O'Brien bumped along the wall by Lachance. Puck on behind the net to Terrace. Terrace got tangled up there, taken away neatly by Murray. Murray trying to pin it along the boards. Now he'll pitch it to the far side, and that's Lachance on it. Shane Lachance will bump it off the wall to center ice. He has scored for Andover. Back in the first period, Kornak tally. Oh, loose puck side of the goal. Nobody knew where it was for Andover, and that's not good news. Now it's sent it off of Chingris. Boy, Hingham nearly... Had a fatuitous break right there. Taken by O'Brien. Got tied up. Now uh, it's a loose puck. Backhander. Wide by Jacob Clark. Is Andover starting to run out of gas here with 345 remaining? I'm wondering that right now here just from watching them here because they're letting it hang, hang them have its way. Just going down the slot, going down the, the wings. And I, you wonder here how much those you know those legs are. It's it's the kind of the the fresh legs out here. And this is when you think about those, those end of practices, Don, where it's, you're building your legs here, and this is what you're building them for these final few minutes. Down to 322. Puck still frozen in the corner. The officials just letting the time tick away. He can go to dinner earlier. The time ticks off the clock. It's still tied up in the corner there, but not frozen and out of view of the official. So, therefore, no whistle. Yeah, Here's interesting. Jake Lachance. That's about a good 15-second yeah. runoff Absolutely. there, Don. Absolutely. Puck on behind the net. Taken by Cornette. Tommy played it up ahead. Got a nice bounce off the wall. Cross-size pass and deflected, but found its mark anyhow. That's Sullivan. Sullivan dangles into the right circle. Broken up on the back check by Lachance, and he sends safely to center. Tommy Cornack rushing back in. Cornack along the wall. Gets rubbed up by Bellucci. Those two have tangled before. Bellucci, perhaps the biggest, strongest defenseman out there for Andover. Lugs it to the near left wing. A little back up from Lachance. Lachance with some space. Played it up ahead. It's going to be chipped up off the glass by Arpin to the far side and quickly played back into the end over end by the defenseman Cornet. Yeah, we're, we're getting to that point right now. You have to wonder. <laughs> and the high slot, quick shot. Arpin slid it along the 
Feeney with a chance. Up and try to force a pass in a slot intercepted. Potential three on two. Down the wing comes Higgins. Shot goes off the stick of Bellucci. Bellucci wallops Higgins to the ice surface. It's back to the line right side. Shot by Frankie Higgins. Knocked down. Trying to keep it in was Kenny. He couldn't. Racing after the loose puck is Feeney. Feeney will poke at it. It's up in the air. He's being guarded by Wooden. Feeney got it. Put it side of the goal for Dillman. Dillman takes down Frankie Higgins. No call. I don't think uh, if we were in the first period of a regular season game, he might have gone right there for a hook. Who knows? Racing after the puck is Gress gave it away in the slot. Backhander. Kingress. Save on Frankie Higgins. Wow. Andover gave the puck away in their defensive end. Shingaris comes up big. Yeah, you know, Hingham again has had their, their chances here, and that's the thing that I think is really that's making in this final few minutes here really exciting, the fact that, you know, they have Shingaris is refusing to yield any single puck. 125 remaining in regulation, tied at one. you got to be thinking overtime now, perhaps. There's a glove save rebound. Chingris looking for it, and he'll cover. Again, there's that pass up the middle. Terrace stole it away and got a good wrister on. Chingris eventually able to find it. But you got to be aware of where you're passing that puck out of your defensive end. 115 left. Yeah, what a what a I mean, acrobatic move there by Chingris. Just sprawling, his, just sprawling out and doing anything possible to stop the puck from going in, and he did it. Just above the minute remaining. Puck sent down ice by Michael Leone. Played off to the far side. Leone with the goal for Andover. Puck back to center ice. Lachance protecting. Holding guard at center. Got a little help over there for Murray. Now the puck squirts to the near side, taken by Terrace. Terrace into the zone. Terrace... Trying to squeeze past a check. He got a penalty up coming to Keeler as he took him down. We'll see a power play for Hingham. This will spill into an overtime if they don't score in the power play. Of course, you could have an end over shorthanded goal, but it's a third penalty of the game, and this one coming late in the third period. And it'll be a trip along the wall. Two minutes for tripping. Yeah, it looks like Jack Keeler going to the, uh, the box and Certainly someone you don't want to lose right now. Obviously a senior forward and defender and someone with that experience. And now a really good opportunity here for Hingham to take advantage of this here. Remember, Hingham has been very good at winning faceoffs. They got Frankie Higgins out there to take the draw. They got Clark on a wing. The pointman of dangerous, that's Jake Higgins and Tommy Kornack. Actually, you got Terrace right now playing the left point at that big wrist shot. It is crucial to win this faceoff from the defensive standpoint. Puck is one to the line, however. Cross-ice pass! Shot! Oh, Kingris safe! Beautiful save on Jacob Clark on a checkerboard pass. Into that circle and the quick one-timer was miraculously done. Shot by Higgins through the screen. Knocked away and sent down ice. So King, who took that face off, lost it for Andover, and then was part of the penalty crew that just sent it on down. This is Higgins down the left wing side. Higgins will curl, 15 seconds in regulation. Pass midpoint, shot, deflected up off the glass as Jake Higgins with a quick wrister. Now it's controlled by Frankie Higgins. Frankie Higgins on the give and go, the front of that. It slid just wide by Quilty. Players still pushing at it, and we're going overtime. They had chances to the Harbourman overtime upcoming. Wow, you know, that, that, that is, they had a couple of opportunities, losing that opportunity, you know, losing a couple of seconds with the puck gliding down, obviously needing Kornak to get involved on that power play. But, wow, what, what an exciting way to wrap up regulation. And now here we go. It's, it's overtime. It's golden goal, as they say. Let's take one quick break. We'll be right back with our first overtime. Tied at one.
Over the years, Friendlies has been dedicated to supporting organizations that benefit children of all ages, and we're proud to partner with the MIAA as its official family restaurant. Friendlies looks forward to aiding high schools in their athletes with fundraising events and programming throughout the year, all to promote our shared ideals of good character, sportsmanship, and active lifestyles. Help us make the world a friendlier place for student athletes across the Commonwealth. Visit your local Friendlies for more details. Well, it's time to hold on to your hat as we move to the overtime. The first of what could be many, who knows, two stingy teams. Each have a lot of goal. Pingham's going to begin this overtime on the power play. Now, 114 left on the power play try here. 0 for 1 with a short power play, an abbreviated one, back in the second period. So it'll be 4 on 3 in front of the goaltenders as you take a skater away. And this really wow. gives the Harbormen a big advantage. Oh, without a doubt here. This is this is going to be an exciting 1 minute and 14 seconds here. I, I, I'm eager to see how this plays out. If Andover can come away with this and somehow still keep the game 1-1, to one, I, kudos to the uh, Golden Warriors, Golden this, Eagles. This is uh, Higgins across. Higgins will carry to the circle, play it on back. Frankie Higgins gets a return pass, trying to play catch with Kornak, Kornak will chase it down. Kornak, cross ice, back in the middle. Jake Higgins, Kornak steps in. His shot, he hit the pipe. Hit the post of the short side on Chingris. Now that would have done it here on the power play in overtime. 43 seconds on the power play. It's four on three. This is Jake Higgins. Kornak, Higgins stepping in. His shot blocked away by Chingris. That comes back again to Higgins. Higgins, another shot. Save. Rebound, Kornak, oh, and hit a body in front of maybe a post. As LeChance went diving, I don't know who got that, but someone got a piece. A shot flooded towards net, and a score on the doorstep. Frankie Higgins on the power play in overtime. Well, that's who we talked about, Frankie Higgins, one of the players to watch for. We said, hey, if this guy is going, if Ingham is going to score, it's going to be facilitated to him. What a great baseball move. Great moment here for the Hingham fans here right in front of us, celebrating this exciting exciting win, a walk-off win. Well, Andover stunned right now, but they will live to play in the elimination game. It is Frankie Higgins with the tally. Boy, they just really peppered him there on the power play in the OT. Time of that goal is going to be 2 minutes and 55 seconds of the overtime. Four on three overtime, and uh, what a finish. What a finish for this one. We've got another one upcoming. I'm looking oh, forward we do. to it. Yeah, we do. All right, we're going to uh, bid adieu in just a moment. Just want to recap the scoring real quick. Tommy Kornack scored in the first for Hingham at 734. The helper is going to Jake Higgins. And to Timmy Carroll, came off a face-off win. It was Andover in the third, finally breaking the ice. Shane Lachance able to tip one in. Off a shot for the blue line. Keeler picked up the helper along with Stevie Ingram. Ingram uh, certainly had a fine game out there. Had some chances for Andover time and time again. Then in the overtime with Keeler in the sin bin. The goal, you just saw it by Frankie Higgins at 250, uh, 205. Yeah, 255. And that's going to do it. Yeah, what, a, what what an exciting one here, too. And we saw, obviously, Andover had a chance. I think we kind of both knew when you saw what happened there with that penalty final seconds. And then the fact that came out, basically three players and a goalie, you thought, okay, the advantage clearly is going to be on Hingham's side and walk-off fashion because, mind you, he literally batted that in the air like a, like a baseball player would, sending that out of the park. And now he sends the Hingham fans home. That's Frankie Higgins with some excitement for later in this tournament. All right, that's going to do it. Just sending a text message to somebody real quick. There we go. As the Zambonis come out, we're going to uh, take a quick break. We'll be back with our back-end game in overtime. A win for Hingham over Andover. They remain in the winner's bracket as they win 2-1. to one. Andover drops the elimination bracket. More on that. we got another one coming your way. St. John's in Burlington. Bye for now from the Songas.